Welcome to my channel and I'm here to say my name is Quiche and I didn't come to play. Like, subscribe, and comment below. Here we go, let's start this video. So I'm a person who always looking at a purpose or an intent behind everything that I do. So my heartfelt prayer is that you watching this video, that you feel the power of God, that you feel the Holy Spirit speaking to you and willing in you and being able to increase your faith just by being able to tune in. Amen. And another thing is that you can't, ha God won't take your faith away. Um, faith is a choice and it's also not because of what you sinned about, the decision you made in your life, the mistakes. That has nothing to do with how you believe in God and what he said to be a promise. I think a lot of the times people get afraid of making mistakes, believing that the things God promised them will not come to pass. But our mm -hmm. story is already written. Mm -hmm. And don't let fear defeat your faith. And it can't because we are victorious. However, it's all in your mind. Some things are, some thoughts that are not even ours can come in, but your mm -hmm. faith will dilute all of those things. Mm -hmm. And so, that's my heart's desire is that people will learn that their faith is grounded and their faith can't be uprooted their faith can only grow so amen yeah. i like that you said that because in the book the battlefield of the mind um it's really getting our thoughts together right a lot of things about our whole behavior and everything that we do starts up here it starts with a thought before I raise my hand, my brain has already communicated with my arm and my hand to move. So a lot of things that we have issues with, we have to get to the root cause. And the root cause is the way that we're thinking. So when you talk about earlier how I define faith, to me, that's a loaded question and a loaded response. So as we go through this video, I'm going to keep going back to that foundational question and answer it piece by piece. So when you're defining faith, Faith begins to change your thought pattern. Faith begins to change how you think. Because of my faith, I now have to think more positive. Mm -hmm. I always have to think and have a better outlook or perspective on things because of my faith. So when you talk about what faith is, faith is looking at a situation but believing the best. Mm -hmm. Looking at, you know, a lot of issues, a lot of problems, and looking at a situation that looks dead, and utilizing my faith to make it come alive again. And that's what faith is, being able to change the way that we see things, be able to change the way that we think. When we are born into the world, this negative mindset is almost natural because it's of our flesh, right? So when we experience things, for the most part, you know, most people expect the worst, right? We expect the worst, we think the worst, and then we're surprised when we get the worst. I tell people all the time, like, I never understood that. <laughs> people speak so negative. Yep. Oh, today's going to be horrible and nothing ever goes my way. You know, this after this, like negative, negative Nancy's. And then they're surprised when, oh my gosh, can you believe? And I'm like, yeah, yeah. I can believe it, right? <laughs> Look what you've been speaking. Look what you've been breathing. Look what you've been birthing through your words. We have to know that. Our words have power. Mm -hmm. And our words come from what we're thinking, right? So we don't just open up our mouth and just blurt out things. A lot of it is already foundational in the way that we think and what's in our heart. So when we begin to work on changing our mind, changing how we see things, that's the beautiful part about faith. Because faith begins to change the way that we see, the way that we think, and then in return, it changes the way that we speak. So our question is coming from your husband, and it's how do we replenish our faith? Now that one is a good one. How do we replenish it? And so a lot of times we're, you're believing God to do something, you believe in God for something, and it doesn't happen, then sometimes we can lose faith. And the question is how do we replenish it? So I would answer that by saying, just getting back in prayer, getting back in our word. You know, a lot of times we feel like God didn't answer a prayer because we didn't get the result that we were hoping for. But that does not by itself um, declare the fact that he didn't answer the prayer. 
And I think a lot of times we have to bring ourselves back to that. Just because we didn't get the outcome that we prayed or believed God for, how do we not know that that wasn't an answer in and of itself? Mm -hmm. So regardless of what happens, being able to keep your faith founded and grounded in the word of God and the will of God, knowing that he loves me, that even though I was praying for the situation in this way and it did not, that means greater is coming. That means better is coming. So for me, my faith is replenished by choosing to still believe that God has a plan, even when what I hoped for didn't happen the way that I thought that it would. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, that's when we get disappointed. And we be truthful about the disappointment. The disappointment is that, that God didn't answer it the way that we wanted him to. And when we're having true faith, we're not telling God how to do it. We're just asking God to do something about it, right? So trusting that he knows best and whatever solution or resolution that comes, you know, through our prayers, knowing that we trust God enough that it's what's best for us because he knows what's best for us. So it all goes back to our true foundation in God himself and our true relationship that we have with God is how our faith, faith continues to get replenished day in and day out, even when we find ourselves in a situation where we feel feel that we have unanswered prayers or unanswered response to what we wanted is also checking yourself to say that's what you wanted to come out of that but God has a bigger plan so although that didn't work out the way that you wanted it to stay keep your faith stay grounded keep believing because if you keep believing greater is coming yes <laughs> oh, that's good um I the way I replenish my faith is yes the word the word just it's part of learning and building your identity because God, your identity is through Christ mm -hmm. having faith that you trust yourself for sometimes I have to put myself in my own shoes <laughs> like take away my thoughts take away what I've been seeing but really put myself in that in that manner where I'm thinking like okay if I have to trust God if I know that God can do this. First, I have to trust that I know who I am and that I am his daughter. I am um, a chosen vessel. So that's why my faith gets replenished because I'm like, okay, you said this in your word. You said that I am above and not below. You said these things to me. So I know that it's true. And so reciting those words, but also worshiping, mm -hmm. worshiping him yeah. and bringing his presence in always like it just refreshes my entire being yes because sometimes i'm like oh, i'm just feeling not today just not my day and then i'm like nope that's the enemy because those are not even my words and you promised me that every day we have a new mm -hmm. a new we wake up refreshed and renewed Amen. and we have to be grateful so um changing my heart is another way um not letting those thoughts come into my heart but just letting it not let them consume let it, you. Yes, consume you. Mm -hmm. Because faith, it just, the way my faith works and the way it's been going so far is that um, I can no longer believe only what I see. Because mm -hmm. I think I'm, because it could be my age, but I really think that's like solid. Because I'm 19 wow. and I have all these, these visions, all these things I'm seeing, and I don't always have the words for it or the knowledge for it. I just be like, okay, I see that. That could actually happen. I just have like a heart posture. And so in the word, it says, have a childlike faith. Is that mm -hmm. right? So um, what does that mean to you? When it says having a childlike faith, if you look at children and their innocence, they believe almost for anything, right? So you tell them something, they believe it, and they hold on to it. They don't let it go. You promise them something, even if you forgot, a child will remember and they will remind you of what you said. It's just even like believing in Santa Claus or the Tooth Fairy. They have faith in that thing, and they hope in it, they believe in it, and they trust in it. So when we're talking about having childlike faith, it's that innocent, it's that strong faith, it's that consistent faith of a child where you're not going to let go of the promises of God. One thing about being a believer, if God promised you something, you have to stand fast on believing it until it comes to pass. I don't care if it takes one year, 15 years, 20 years, 30 years. You have to ex, you know, activate your faith 
hold on to the promise and never let go. And I guarantee you, if you do that, you will see it come to pass. A lot of times with faith is being able to see if you're going to hold on and believe and wait for it. A lot of times we stop waiting. And when we stop waiting, we then put our hands in the mix and we try to maneuver it and fix it our way. And we negate our faith. And now we have taken it over. And now when we put our hands in, of course, we're going to mess it up, right? Because we did choose not to wait on God. So being able to have faith also makes you a, pa a person who's patient. To say, you know what, I'm not going to fix it on my own, but I'm going to wait on God. And as you was talking earlier, and we were talking about how do you replenish your faith, the word of God says that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. That's how your faith get replenished, by surrounding yourself with hearing the word of God, reading the word of God, quoting the word of God, believing the word of God, is how our faith is replenished each and every day. And even like you said with worship, you know, you could be in a bad mood, feeling sad, feeling depressed, and you may not even have a reason why. You just start feeling this way, like a spirit of heaviness just overtakes you. But one thing, when you begin to invite the Holy Spirit and invite the presence of Jesus in your living room, in your bedroom, in your car, and you begin to worship, it begins to shift your emotions. It begins to shift your mood because now you're having joy because of faith right? You're having joy that whatever the situation is that got me down, I may be aware of it, I may not. Whatever it is that's trying to overtake me, my faith says it's already done. My faith says it's going to be well. And as you begin to worship, it reminds you and it replenishes you because you begin to now take that burden, take that thing that's weighing you down, and you're giving it to Christ. When we're worshiping him, it's an opportunity for us to glorify him. It's an opportunity for us to lift him up and to magnify him. But it's also an opportunity for us to exchange. It's an exchange process. So we get to exchange our sadness for his joy. We get to exchange whatever's weighing us down, that burden, and being able to leave it at his feet. In exchange, we begin to, you know, take away being lifted and lighter because of that exchange process that happens during worship. So that's a time that we have to learn not to take for granted because we can walk away refreshed, revived, and have everything that we need if we learn to worship and not allow our problem to distract us from even the time of worship that we can have and enjoy that presence and that communion with the Holy Father. Yes. Um, I'm going to end it right here. I thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys like this video. Subscribe and share it with someone. Comment down below what faith is to you. And have a blessed day, a night, evening, wherever you are. Bye-bye. God bless you. <laughs>